Live from Faith Christian Central Church Ministries, get ready for a life-changing message that will minister to your heart from Dr. Carlton Sharp. You will never be the same. Never, ever be the same. Join us as we are building faith, building bridges, and building lives. In five, four, three, two. Hey, church family, don't forget to download our mobile app available for both Apple and Android. If you have an Apple device, simply type in Faith Christian CC in the App Store. If you have an Android device, just type Faith Christian Center Church in the Google Play Store. And remember this, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Access to your favorite sermons and content is easier than ever with the Faith Television Network. Between live stream and VidTivo, you can stream hundreds of hours of content all at the push of a button, including what's happening in a neighborhood, and all new weekly episodes of Tag Team Thursdays. And don't forget, join us for service every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Over the past several years, Faith Christian Center Church has been expanding our digital footprint. We live in a new era. The way we access content now has completely changed, making it easier for you, our viewers, to get the content you want whenever you want it. And as always, our platform has adapted to this new era. If the world is benefiting from these new methods of content creation, why shouldn't we as God's people? Our video on demand streaming has brought us to new heights and has empowered us with the ability to potentially reach millions across the world. But innovations are made daily, and as the world continues to move forward, so does the church. That's why I'm pleased to announce that we are rebranding Tag Team Thursday and our Wednesday night Bible studies as all new original podcasts. Same dynamic word, the same content you know and love, but now available on the go on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Pocket Cast, and so much more. Access to your favorite episodes can now be found on these platforms. And it's absolutely free to subscribe to our channel so you don't want to miss any of the upcoming episodes. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Imagine starting each day with the power of prayer. Well, at 6 a.m., you can join us for a moment of spiritual refreshing. By dialing the number 267-807-9601, access code 298-581-777 to connect with our wake, pray, and repeat prayer line. Now, when God's people come together in prayer, His power manifests and makes profound differences in our lives. Remember, where two or three are gathered together in His name, He is there among us. I am filled with excitement and eager anticipation for what God is about to do in our lives because we choose to pray. Now, scripture makes it clear that it is God's very nature to intervene when we pray. So start your day with people of like precious faith as we seek the face of God, intercede for others, and fellowship one with another by calling the number 267. 267- 807-9601 access code 298-581-777 I'm expecting exponential possibilities when we wait, pray, and repeat together now remember, we're building faith we're building bridges, and we are building lives Transformation is an ongoing process. This 31-day devotional for the month of August will guide us through scriptures and reflections to embrace and experience transformation in our lives. Each day includes a scripture reference, reflection point, main point, and practical application to help us grow in our faith and live out our new identity in Christ Jesus. Embrace the new life we have in Christ Jesus, continuing to renew our minds and living out our new identity. May this month of August be a time of deep spiritual renewal and growth equipping us to live boldly and confidently in the new life God has given us. Now remember, we're building faith, 
building bridges, and we are building lives. Your grandfather drove this? My dad told me he was gonna fix it over me. This is the way he left it. Like everything else. You are my son, but I'm giving you one month to find a job, or you can find one of your little friends that's gonna let you sleep on their couch for free. Can I help you? I'm just trying to talk to a young lady right here. I need for you to leave my shop right now. I'm gone, and I won't be back either. That's something right there your father would do. Well, I ain't him. You acting like him. Boy! It's hard for a woman to call out the man and her son. I just need some prayer support. I'm just trying to see about a job, right? I ain't hit about nothing. You what, you a salesman for this company? I'm the president. That's for more. A big part of becoming a man is showing up. Can you do that, Isaiah? I'm hearing all these promises. Oh, Lord! When my sister tells me that she needs prayer support, honey, I bring prayer support. Am I in the right place? Miss Clara! We pray that the Lord will open Isaiah's eyes so that he could see himself the way that the Lord sees him. You're 50 minutes early. It's trying not to be late again. I want to introduce you to a small group of men that mean the world to me. We grow together, we eat together. It's one of the most important things I've ever done in my life. God has forgiven me for so much. Who was I to refuse to forgive? Okay, Jesus, I can give it to you. What kind of man do you want to be? And what do you want people to think when they see you coming? We only got six of us, seven including Emmett. I'm willing to go to second mile. We can't just walk out and do nothing. Let's roll. If I may be blunt, a man stands in front of me. Isaiah, welcome to the fort. Mm, mm, now that is good. Miss Claire, I need you to come back here more often. Mm -hmm. Keisha needs you. <laughs> in the church right here in Beaumont, Texas. And I want to thank you for tuning in to our live broadcast. You know, you make our services so very special each time you join us, and we hope that today's lesson will minister to your hearts. Now, our desire is that you enjoy the worship experience, the fellowship of the ministry of the Word, and that it will feed your faith and grow your spirit. So without further ado, get your Bible, your notepad, and your pen, and let's tune in to the live broadcast that's already in progress. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Oh, oh, oh. 
good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lift your hands and worship. Yeah. 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 
lifted higher. Yes. Higher. Higher, Lord. Higher. Oh, God. Jesus, you'll be lifted higher. Lift him higher, oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you be lifted higher, yeah. be lifted higher, Hallelujah. service today. You make our services so very special. Amen. Whether you're watching by way of uh, Above the Cloud, live stream, Roku, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Amazon TV, Google TV, Apple TV, or our mobile app. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Again, you make our services so very special. There's a QR code right there on the screen. Those of you who are watching by way of all, all of our online, you can scan that screen, that, that QR code. And there's a special message from Lady Gwen and I. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Hallelujah. Then let me welcome those who are in Detroit, Michigan on Beacon 3 TV. Welcome Detroit. It's in the house today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then, of course, we want to welcome those in Canton, Ohio, uh, Atlanta, Arkansas, Phoenix, Arizona, California, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston, Baytown, Lake Charles, and Baton Rouge, and of course, the Golden Triangle area. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. You make our services so very special. Let me say this. Let me thank the praise team for setting the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. And our band. Amen. I tell you, y'all doing an awesome job. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we want to give God all the praise for all of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Lady, Lady Gwen. Here's Lady Gwen. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I just want us to do a, a little small little gesture this morning. Can everyone just breathe in and breathe out? One more time. Breathe in and breathe out. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. In Psalms 118 and 24, it says that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. There's someone who didn't wake up this morning. We know every weekend we are going to see and view someone's body. They did not wake up this morning. God has given you the breath to breathe in and breathe out. He has given you life today not only to celebrate and uplift his name, but to uplift others who are here on earth. This verse encourages us to embrace each day with joy and gratitude, recognizing that every day is a divine gift from our Heavenly Father. It reminds us to find reasons to rejoice and be glad, even amidst all the busyness that's happening right now even amidst all the challenges that we may be facing. 
So I just want you to remember this. As long as you have breath in your body, praise ye the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning once again. Amen. We give God all the praise and the glory for all that he has done for us, all that he's doing for us in the name of Jesus. Hey, before I begin, uh, as you know, uh, school starts on Monday. Praise the Lord. Amen. But most of us, I mean, there's some school districts that who have already started, but the, but the rest of the schools in the Golden Triangle area, next week they begin uh, as they go back to school. And, uh, and so we're going to be praying for our teachers, our students, our staff, uh, for all of them in just a few moments. But before we do that, uh, on this past Monday, you know, we had the opportunity to be a blessing uh, to some young people who came out to get some free haircuts. So Shell, if you, you put that on the screen, we got some B-roll footage. Uh, the barber showed up with all of their equipment, amen, to, to, to uh, cut the hair. And uh, we had Mr. Harold Wilson, who is the master barber over at Barber's Trade School, Inc. Uh, he was cutting some young ladies' hair. Yeah, they had even young ladies who came uh, to be a part of the, the haircut, amen. And then, uh, of course, the barbers got involved, amen. Those are students at the school. And so they were doing a good job. That young man right there, he said, I, I'm not going to get my hair cut unless I have this football in my hand. So we thank God for that. But uh, we give God all the praise. This is, I mean, we've been doing this now, Shell, for how long? Since when? What, what year? 2003. We've been doing the back to school uh, 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 thing, uh, whether it was Super, super Weekend, uh, uh, Super Saturday. And so, uh, uh, but we've been doing it now since 2003. And uh, we, we thank God for the partnership with Barber's Trade School uh, and uh, all of the barbers that were cutting hair. And then after they finished getting their hair cut, uh, uh, Team Tebow gave each one of the kids a, a, a free uh, snow cone, amen, a flavored snow cone, amen. And so we give God all the praise for Team Tebow also. There's all the barbers that were there. Let's give them a big hand, praise the Lord, amen. And then Team Tebow, give them a big hand, praise the Lord, amen, as they gave out the, the free snow cones. Praise the Lord, amen, glory to God. So we give God all the praise for that. And then um, um, William Landry over at um, Beaumont Major League and Beauty uh, Shop on Delaware, 3960 Delaware. There's a few more haircuts that they want to give away, so I have coupons for those who need a haircut that's absolutely free. Uh, so if those of you who are watching, all you have to do is put it in the comments section uh, that I want one of those certificates, amen, for a free haircut for my child. Uh, and then we'll hook up with you, get this coupon to you, this certificate to you, and you can go to the barbershop and get your hair cut for free, amen, and get them ready for back to school, amen. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for all the partnerships that we had with, with those who are for back to school. Now let me, let me take this moment to pray for the teachers, the students, the staff, uh, the, the, the janitorial staff, uh, the bus drivers, amen, everybody that's involved in our school district. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we do thank you, God, for allowing us the gift of our children. Yes, God, they are a gift. And God, you put them in our hands. So, Father, we come this morning to pray for them as they prepare to go back to school on Monday. Father, we thank you that you give them the knowledge and understanding that they need, Father, as they begin this school year. Father, you told us in your word to train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. So, Father, not only do we give them the education of this world, but, God, we train them up in, in your things, God. We train them up in the word of God so that they can be mighty warriors in your kingdom. And, Father, we come and we pray right now, God, for the teachers, God, that they would have a passion for teaching our children that they will come prepared this year to bring out the best in every child. No matter what level they're at, God, that they could pull out the good in them. And then, Father, we come and we pray for the administrators, the superintendents, God, the assistant superintendents, and all of those who are in authority over our school district. God, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus that they would have the wisdom to guide this district in the way that you want it to go, Father. And Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus for every bus driver who transports our children. 
God, that they would transport them in safety, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, encamp your angels round about the buses as they travel these roads and these streets in our city. And Father, we thank you right now that no hurt, harm, or danger shall come against our children in the name of Jesus. God, we even thank you for the custodial staff who will clean up the buildings, God, who will take care of our children. And Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus right now, Father, that they have a passion for what they do. Then, Father, those who are in the cafeteria staff, God, we thank you now in the name of Jesus, God, that they will prepare food with love. God, that our children will eat, amen, not only the physical food, God, but they would eat the word of God. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity for this new year. Father, we thank you for success in our district. And God, we pray that our students will have retention of knowledge, God, even as they take the test. God, that they will pass the test with superior marks in the name of Jesus, because we are your children. And you are our Father. And God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. So, so parents, I know y'all say, praise the Lord, they're going back to school. Glory to God, amen. I know when, uh, when, when our kids were younger, amen, we couldn't wait till school started, amen. Get them back in school, praise the Lord, amen. So, uh, but they start on Monday, so, so watch out for the police in the school zone. They will be out there. So if you're traveling in the school zone, make sure you're going under the speed limit. Praise the Lord, because they were, they, look, they were out this morning, amen, as we were coming to church this morning. So, amen. So uh, y'all be, be mindful of that. Amen. You don't want to give them God's money. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, y'all, are you ready for the word? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we do thank you, God, for this time of fellowship with people of like precious faith. Father, we thank you that your word flows freely in this place, unhindered and unchecked by any force. Father, we thank you that your word is not born of power and that you confirm our word, your word with signs following. Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ is our high priest and that he ever liveth to make intercessions for us. Now, Father, thank you that my body is strong, my mind is alert, and my lips are anointed, and that I will clearly articulate the word such that every spiritual need is met. Now, Father, I covenant in advance to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the adoration for what shall be revealed this day. And all group that prayer said, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10, praise the Lord. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter number 10. Hallelujah. Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. Well, let's hold up our Bibles, make our confession of faith, hold them up nice and high, and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same, never ever be the same, in Jesus' name, amen, praise the Lord, amen. Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, look at verse number 27, Mark chapter 10, verse number 27, it says, And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible, amen. We've been talking from the subject matter of impossible situations. Have you ever faced the situation that it was beyond your understanding, beyond your ability, beyond your finances, beyond, just beyond you? Amen. Amen. But with God, he says, those situations are possible with him. Amen. And so that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about how, how, how to get God involved in our impossible situations. Go over to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. On last week, we began to talk about, amen, the power of boldness in crisis, amen, in a crisis. If you ever face the crisis in your life, amen, uh, what the devil wants to do is get you into fear, amen. But God says that we, are, we ought to be bold as lions. Somebody say bold as lions. Here in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat faced an impossible situation. He had armies all around him, amen, want to destroy him. But the prophet of God went to him and gave him a word from the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 15, 
he says, and he said, hearken uh, ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto, unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's, amen? And so, so even though Jehoshaphat was facing an impossible situation, TJ, God gave the prophet a word of encouragement to Jehoshaphat that said, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, because this battle does not belong to you. And if you are in a situation right now, and it looks like the fight of your life, understand this, that the battle is not yours. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we said on last week that boldness refers to the courage and confidence to take decisive actions and make faith-driven decisions despite the fear, despite the uncertainty, despite the pressures that the crisis may bring. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to, over to Deuteronomy chapter 20. Deuteronomy chapter 20. So you got to get beyond the, the fear, amen, and make a decisive, decisive decision that you're going to do what God says in this moment. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, Deuteronomy chapter 20 in verse number one, he says this. When thou goest out to battle against the enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle, when ye get near the battle, he says, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. Amen. So last week we found out that God will fight for us. Somebody say God will fight for us. And when we get this recognition in our hearts that God will fight for us, it changes our whole attitude. Amen. That God fights for us. Now go over to Isaiah 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm taking a few moments to review from last week's lesson because as I get into the new information for the day, it's going to be vitally important that you, you have this understanding that God will fight for us. Amen. In Isaiah 41 and verse number 10, Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So God says, I'm with you, amen. I, I, I'm, I'm going to fight for you, amen. I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you, amen. Thank God for his word. The Bible says that, listen, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So I'm trying to establish the fact that God will fight for us. But we have to surrender the fight to him. Whatever battle you're facing right now, you have to surrender that to him. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. That's what God says. So your battle that you're going through, he says, cast it upon me. Amen. Because I care for you. Glory to God. Amen. In, in Psalms 55, in the Amplified, Psalms 55, verse number 22, I'm just going to just look up at the screen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalms 55, in the Amplified version, verse 22 says, Look what it says. Cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. Thank God for that, that he won't let you slip, he won't let you fall, and he will not let you fail, sister Ethel. Glory to God, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Now, let's get into the new information for today. Go to 2 Kings chapter number 6. This morning, I want to talk to you about God will turn what looks like defeat into your victory. <laughs> Amen. God has a way of turning what looks like a defeat into your victory. Now, I could have used Moses and the Red Sea. Amen. When they were at the Red Sea, Pharaoh's armies behind them, the Red Sea in front of them. It looked like that they were going to be destroyed. But God turned that situation around. Even though they were outnumbered, even though they were outgunned, even though they were outmaneuvered, God still turned the situation around. Yeah. 
I, I, Debbie, I could have used David and Goliath when, when David got to the battle with Goliath. He sees this big old giant. Everybody's scared of him. Amen. Everybody's in a panic. And, uh, but David says, I remember how God delivered me out of the bear, out of the lion. But who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I could have used that. He was outsized. Amen. I could have used Jehoshaphat's situation, amen, where all the enemies were trying to destroy him. But, 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 but what God told him to do was get the praisers and put them in front, amen, and let them begin to sing and to praise God and tell me about my goodness, amen. I could have used that as, as a backdrop for this lesson today. I, I could have used Gideon, amen, who uh, he had 32,000 men, but God told Gideon, you got too many. He went down from 32,000 to 300 men, and God says, that's enough right there for me to turn what looks like your defeat into your victory, man. Now, think about this. He had 300 men against a 135,000 men army, amen? But God says, you have enough, Gideon, because you have me on your side. It wasn't about the 300. It was about God being with them, amen, and God fighting the battle for them. I could have I could used that, amen, as a backdrop for this lesson. I could have used Paul and Silas when they were locked up in jail, amen. They were, the Bible says they were in the innermost part of the prison, amen. And, and, and instead of complaining, instead of murmuring, they begin to sing and to pray and to praise God, amen, and something supernatural happened, amen. The chains that were on them fell off. And not only for them, but for everybody in the prison. Amen. So, so God said, listen, who, look, if you are in the vicinity, I'm going to bless those around you too. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. But today I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the prophet Elisha. I'm going to use him as our backdrop. How God can turn what looks like defeat into our victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Kings chapter six. 2 Kings chapter 6, look at verse number 15. Watch this now. <clears throat> and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us or more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 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 this, this, is, a, this is a great backdrop. Sister Simeon, to see how God can turn what looks like defeat into our victory, amen. God doesn't merely watch from a distance. He engages in our battles, bringing, up, bringing about outcomes that defy human logic. I can just imagine th that this young man who goes out and he sees all of the armies and the chariots and horses uh, around him, and he comes back with human logic and says, Master, we are about to die. It's over now. Amen. We're defeated now. And Elijah, I can just imagine his calm confidence. He says, no, young man, the battle's not over yet. Amen. Because God is going to get involved in our situation. Amen. Hallelujah. See, 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 God has a way of turning defeat into victory because of his nature. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. Amen. He's omniscient. He's all knowing. And he is sovereign. He is the supreme ruler. Amen. <laughs> Go to Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46. See, what, what we have to understand is get some knowledge that God operates beyond our human limitations because he's able to see the end from the beginning. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah, amen. In Isaiah, Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46. Look at verse number nine, Isaiah 46 at verse number nine. Hallelujah. Look what he says. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do my 
pleasure. Amen. So God says, when we, when we understand, get an understanding that he's not limited by our human uh, uh, logic. Amen. Because he's able to see the end from the very beginning. And what looks like a defeat mm, in our eyes is often part of his divine plan. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah, to bring him greater glory. Amen. Now, now go back to 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's, let's go back and look at, the, at what was really happening. That why this young man had, 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 had gotten into fear about these armies being around him. Verse number 8. Watch this now. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 8. Watch this now. Look what he says. He says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, And such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchambers. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Now watch this now. You got to understand. God tells the prophet who is in Israel what the king of Syria is saying in his, in his bedroom. Now, that, and, and that, that shows you how powerful God is, that God can hear your enemy's voice and tell you what they're about to do. Man, I remember, I remember uh, Sister Bond when I was working at ExxonMobil, I, I became a union steward and the union steward's responsibility was whenever there was a problem, that they go to management and say, hey, listen, they, here's, here's, here's the rules that you're violating based upon the contract. And, uh, and so you got to change, change your ways, basically. And so, so, so they, they, I was not their favorite person because I could read the contract. And I knew, based upon the contract, that there were certain things that they couldn't do. So, so they, they were upset with me, and so they decided to, uh, to uh, try to get rid of me. Amen. And so, so they would have management meetings. But what they didn't know was God had already placed somebody in the meeting to come and tell me what everything they told, what they said about me in that meeting. And they said, they came and told me to say, hey, Carlton, they're going to try to set you up. They're going to try to do this, that, and the other. So watch, watch this, watch here, watch there. So every time that management tried to send out their little spies to get me, I already knew what they were doing. That's what God was doing for the children of Israel. Whenever the Syrians were trying to set a trap for them, God told the prophet, tell the king of Israel, don't go that direction because the trap has been set. Now, I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak to each and every one of us right now. When your enemies are trying to trap you in, your, in a situation that God already will give you foreknowledge, listen, they're trying to set you up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, watch this now. So, so, so the, the prophet had what I call prophetic insight. Amen. He had, he had the divine ability to perceive and understand and receive revelation from God about that situation. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, he had spiritual discernment. God gave him guidance and discretion, confirmation and encouragement to tell the king of, of Israel. Amen. Now, now you may be facing, you may be facing some opposition right now. So you have to ask yourself, why am I facing this opposition? I'll tell you, I'll give you five reasons why you may be facing uh, opposition in your life. First of all, divine assignment, amen? Your divine assignment and purpose, amen, will cause opposition to come into your life. Secondly, we have an adversary. We're in a spiritual warfare, amen? I, 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 I just can't understand why, why believers 
think that, that, that you, once I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, everything is, is going to be fine. I'm not going to have no more challenges in my life. No, baby. You, you just got into the crosshairs of your enemy. Amen. And so, so you could be in spiritual war. Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Yeah, the Bible says in John uh, uh, 10 that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You have an adversary that's trying to kill you, that's trying to steal from you, that's trying to destroy you because this is spiritual warfare. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse number 12. Look what he says. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. This is a war that we're in. So you could be facing opposition because of your divine assignment and your purpose. You could be uh, facing opposition because of spiritual warfare. And you could be uh, experiencing uh, opposition because when you expose evil, evil don't like it. Amen. See, that's what was happening with Elisha. Elisha was exposing evil and the king of Syria didn't like it. Man, I tell you, when you go against the powers that be for what is right and you stand up for what is right. Amen. Look, you're going to have some opposition. When you see what the word of God says and, and, and everybody is going the other direction and you stand up for what God says, you will face opposition. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But watch this now. You could be facing opposition because to test and strengthen your faith. <laughs> what you say, Pastor Sharp? Watch this now. Go to 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Some tests that we face are designed to test our faith. Amen. And to strengthen our faith. Mm. So, so it could be that God is allowing you to go through your opposition just so that your faith can be strong enough for, for what God wants to do in your life. Now watch this, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse number 6. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh Jesus, verse number 6. Watch this now. Look what he says. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness uh, through manifold temptation, trials or tests that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. He says you might have to go through the fire. There is a purification process that happens as, as gold, watch this now, go through the fire. If you watch it from the natural perspective, if, <laughs> you, you see how they put the gold into the, to the furnace. And all of the impurities of, in that gold rises to the top and they're able to scrape it off. Amen. Well, that's how what happens with your faith. When you're going through your most difficult opposition, amen, it could be that God is allowing the impurities to rise to the top so that it can scrape off and that your faith will be as pure gold. Woo! Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay, here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. Watch this now. The reason why you might be facing opposition is so that God's glory can be revealed. God's glory can be revealed. Go to John chapter 9. Amen. See, see sometimes, sometimes we don't, we don't think that, that us going through the fire, that God's going to get the glory because after all, this is a painful process. But God said, listen, when you go through that process, listen, I'm going to get the glory because when I show up for you, they're going to know it's me. Amen. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Look at verse number one, John chapter nine, <laughs> verse number one. Watch this. Watch what he says. And Jesus passed by. As, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither had this man sin, nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. In other words, he didn't do nothing wrong. His parents didn't do anything wrong. Listen, he's in this condition so that God can get the glory. Amen. 
Man, if, if, Sister Simeon, if we get that revelation knowledge, that it could be that God is allowing me to go through my situation because the world knows that it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible, amen? So God's going to get the glory of what you're going through right now in the name of Jesus, amen? So what's the difference then? What's the difference between the servant and the prophet? Amen? Both of them seen something. But what's the difference? Amen? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. No, no, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I believe that the first difference between the servant and the prophet is that one focus on the physical while one focus on the spiritual. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah, amen. See, 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 what eyes are you looking through? Which one of the eyes are you looking through? Well, Pastor, I, I can see, I can see stuff, right? I see it right here. I see my bills. I see it in my doctor's report. I see this, I see that. But are you looking from God's perspective? <laughs> So many people have, been, have missed it. Amen. They're missing it because they only see things from the physical, Cheryl. Amen. They're looking for things from the, from, from the physical. And, and, and what the devil does is he allows you to see it from the physical and get you into fear. Okay. You're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at verse number 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 18. Watch this now. Look what he says. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. But the things which are not seen are what? So, so how do I not look at what I'm looking at? I, 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 I'm not denying that I see what I see. But I'm choosing by an act of my will to see it from God's perspective. So he says, he says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen, they are temporary. Amen? Hmm. Hmm. So if the things which are temporary are subject to change, and sometimes they're subject to change immediately, then he tells us, don't look at that. Amen? Don't, 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 don't put all of your attention on that. What we should be focusing on is what's eternal and what will always come to pass. And that is the word of God. So he said, listen, look, listen. So, so when you're facing your opposition, when you're facing your troubles, when you're facing your battle, he says, don't look at that. Go find the word of God on it because my word is eternal. Yeah. Not one jot or one tittle of my word shall fail, God says. So I got to get the word of God. I got to, okay, God, I, 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 see, I see what's happening right here. But I'm choosing not to look at this. I got your word now, God. So now my decision has to be whether I'm going to look at this or look at that. So, God, I'm choosing by an act of my will to use my faith to look at this, at your word, God, because your word cannot return unto you void. But it has to accomplish that which you please. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, here's another difference between the servant and the prophet. He, they both responded to the situation, but one responded with fear and the other responded with faith. Okay? Hmm. Two individuals can have the same experience. But one of them can choose to respond in faith versus fear. I'll give you an example. The doctor can come and tell uh, someone, you are about to die. And uh, just go ahead and get your affairs in order 
because you don't have much time to live. And, and I'm telling you, it's a short time. It kind of reminds me of Hezekiah. When the prophet Isaiah goes to Hezekiah and says, Hezekiah, God has sent me and he told, you, told me to tell you, get your affairs in order because you're about to die. Hezekiah did this. He turned to the wall and he began to pray and remind God, hey, God, look, I, I've always done what you told me. And watch this now. Isaiah, after he gave the message, Isaiah was leaving. Isaiah was like, I'm, I'm, I'm a peace, deuce, I'm gone, I'm gone. And God said, stop, turn around, Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah. Hezekiah, God sent me back. I know I just left, but God told me to tell you, God heard your prayer, and he give, he's extended your life for 15 years. Glory to God, amen. So somebody can see, say, the doctor's report says, I, I, I'm about to die. But I can look at God's word and says, by his stripes, I'm healed. I can look at God's word and say, he sent his word to heal me and to deliver me from my destruction. I, I, I can look at God's word and says that, look, he takes sickness and disease away from me. Now, which one am I going to believe? Am I going to believe the doctor's report or am I going to believe God's report? Yeah. And see, whichever one you choose, see, it's a choice. Okay, go to Deuteronomy. Ha, Shell, I didn't put this in there, but Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let's see if you can work that thing out, Shell. Let's see, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. I'm going to give you a, a, a moment, Shell. Mm-hmm. Let me see what you're working with back there. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse number 19. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. If you got it, Shell, go ahead and put it up on the screen, but if not, I'll just read it out loud. Amen. Look what he says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, do what? Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So God said, listen, I'm placing a choice before you. Amen. You got to choose which of these two factors are you going to respond to? Are you going to respond in fear or are you going to respond in fear? It's your choice. It is your choice. Now, now, now God's not going to force you to, to, to walk in faith, amen, but you got to choose by an act of your own will. God, I, I, I believe your report. God, I'm going to be in faith on this thing. And that's the difference between the servant because watch this now, the servant came back because he seen with his own eyes that there was enemies all around him. He came back and said, man of God, man of God, man, man of God, we, we, we about to die. The, the horses and the chariots are out there. Fear jumped in. And whenever you're in fear, you cannot be in faith. Listen to me now. In any situation that you face, whenever you're in fear, you are not in faith. They cannot work together. So, so, so then what was the prophet's response? The servant said, we're about to die. But the prophet says, hold up a second. I see something different. He said, listen, there is more with us than all with them. Hold up a second. Man, I can just imagine the young man saying, hold up, hold up. Look, look, Elisha, you done lost your mind. It's me and you. And there are thousands of horses. There are thousands of chariots. There are thousands of men out there. And you telling me right now that there's more with us than there are with them? He said, you got, you done lost your mind. You know how, you know how it is when, when, when you start telling them what God is doing in your life and they see the conditions that you're in and they say, she done lost her mind. No, no, she, she, she really, she been listening to Pastor Sharp too long. She been listening to Pastor Sharp and now he done got them all hooked up in that fake thing and, 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 and she said, I'm, I'm going to make it through this. Amen. Because there's more with us than there are with them. And watch this now. And so, so the prophet says, Lord, I see something different. Because I know based upon my track record with you that you fight for us. That the battle that I see out there, even though it looks like my inevitable de defeat, you're about to give me the victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so God opened his eyes. 
that he can see what I see. That's why you need a man of God that can see some stuff. Amen. That can see beyond your situation. That can see beyond your problem. That can see beyond your battle. Amen. And give you a word of encouragement that says, listen, listen, don't you be afraid. Don't you be in fear. Don't you be dismayed. For this battle don't even belong to you. He tells, Lord, open his eyes. He might see. Mm. And here's the third thing I see in this, in this situation. The difference between the two is one had limited vision and versus the other one have an expanded vision. Amen. So, so see, I can be limited based upon my own knowledge. Okay. The reason some people don't excel in life is because of the lack of knowledge that they have. And so they're limited based upon that knowledge. Amen. So if you only have a, let's say a sixth grade education, then guess what? You can't go as far as somebody that has a, a master's degree or a doctor's de degree because you're limited in what you know. But when you go to another level and expand yourself, open yourself up to more knowledge, guess what? Now you can believe more. And so, so, so this young man had not experienced what Elisha the prophet had experienced. So his knowledge was limited. Now, now can y'all just imagine? Elisha was following Elijah, seeing the miraculous things that God had done in Elijah's life. And then when, 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 when Elijah was about to be transported to, the, to, to God, he asked Elisha, hey, listen, I know you've been following me. I know you've been looking at what, what God has been doing in, in my ministry. But now, what do you want? And Elisha says, I want the double portion. Everything that you've done, I want God to do a double in my life. Amen. So, so watch this now. So he gets this anointing on his life. And now not only the, the miracles that he's seen Elijah do, now Elisha is doing even greater things. So now his experience is different than a young man's. Because the, it could be that the young man never experienced anything like that. But now here's Elijah. Elisha. He said, man, this ain't nothing. I remember. I remember when, 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 the, when the woman, the Shulamite woman, amen, she, she, she blessed me with a room at her house. And I asked her, I asked the servant, well, what is it that the woman wants? And the, my, my servant says, she don't have a child. And, and Elisha tells the woman, he said, listen, by the time I come back next year, you're going to have a child based upon my word. And, and watch this now. And when he came back the year later, she had the child, just like the man of God said. I, I can just imagine Elisha saying, I've seen God work this thing out. As a matter of fact, that child died. And she came to me when I was in another town. And when I seen her far off, I asked her, is all well with you? She said, all is well, man of God. Her son was dead. But yet her confession was, man of God, you done taught me how to use this word. So instead of me complaining about my son being dead, instead of me saying the wrong thing, no, 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 all is well, man of God. He goes, comes back with the lady. Her son is literally dead. And she bypassed the little boy's room, what she could have left him. She bypasses her room, what she could have laid him down. And she puts the child on the prophet's bed because she even tap into this anointing, amen, that, that, that she done sold into. Man of God, I, I, I can just imagine Elisha said, God, I seen you raise him from the dead. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. So now that I'm looking at this situation and my servant is in fear, but God, I got a track record with you, God. I've seen you work over and over and over again. God, I, I, I've seen you move on my behalf. And the prophet says, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Open the under, his understanding that he might know the incredible God that we serve because there is more with us than there is with him. Okay? So, so now, so, so that's, that's the three things I see. I, 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 I see. I see Elijah's faith allowed him to see beyond the physical reality to the spiritual truth that God's protection was far greater than what was visible what, that was the visible threat, amen? Now, let me give you some, 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 closing, some closing points today. 
So what, what, what must we do, Pastor? What must we do when we're facing what looks like defeat and God turns it around and gives us the victory? What, 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 what must we do? Okay, number one, have a spiritual vision that overcomes fear. Amen. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Have a spiritual vision that overcomes fear. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. Look what it says. For we walk by what? Faith and what? See, faith allows you to see beyond the natural. And even though you may be facing a challenge right now, the eyes of faith says that God is with me. Amen. And it helps me to overcome my fear. Now, the Amplified says it this way, for we walk by faith, we regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction, our belief, respecting man's relationship with God and divine things. We trust and holy fervor, thus we walk, not by sight or by appearance. Amen. Number two, I need to know that God's protection is greater than any threat. <laughs> yeah, God's protection is greater than any threat. Go to Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Man, boy, when you get this revelation, man, it changes. See, now, now, now you can have boldness in your crisis moment. Amen. When you're facing a difficult moment in your life, you can have this boldness now and, and start declaring that God's protection is greater than any threat. Mm. Psalms 34. Look at verse number seven. Psalms 34, verse number seven. Look what he says. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, that have reverence for him. And he does what? He delivers them. Amen. So, so God says, look, I got, okay, okay. A few weeks ago, we seen an incident on the news where the former president had, uh, his, his protection failed him. Now, now, regardless of what political party you're in, what your political stance is, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm trying to show you that God's protection is greater than the Secret Service protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen? And, and this is the top law enforcement agency in our country. And they could not and did not protect him. Amen? But God. <laughs> Somebody say, but God. but God. But God's Secret Service protection agents. Yeah are his angels that he have assigned to you and I. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, they are not, they are not wimpy uh, uh, angels. Amen? No, 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 no. They, they, they will wipe out stuff on your behalf. <laughs> I showed y'all last week, in, uh, I think it was in 1 uh, uh, Kings chapter 19 and, and verse 35. Let me see, let me see, let me see. 1 Kings 19, verse 35. No, no, it had to be 2 Kings. Let's see. I know it's just one of them kings. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's second. It's second Kings 19. It, it, it says, and it came to pass that night that the angel, one angel, one angel, one angel of the Lord and, and, and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and 185,000 men died that night all because one angel came through the camp and wiped everybody out. So now God says, I put angels around you. Yeah. Amen. So that, that's why I can say that God's protection is greater than any threat. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. I need to know that the power of my prayer makes a difference. Go to Jeremiah 33. I got two more points. I got two more points. Jeremiah 33. Watch this now. Jeremiah 33. Amen. See, 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 what I've seen, TJ, is that people discount prayer. 
they don't understand the power of prayer. And because of that, they are leaving on the table what God has given us to communicate with him and get us out of the mess that we're in. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah 33. Look at verse number three. Jeremiah 33, verse number three. Look what he says. Call on unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Now go over to James chapter, chapter five. James chapter five, verse number 16. James chapter 5, verse 16, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified for time's sake. James 5, verse 16, out of the Amplified, it says, Confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another, that you may be healed and restored to, spirit, to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working. When I pray, I am making spiritual power available to me and my situation. That's why I need to pray. That's why I need to, that's why I need to communicate with God every day. Why? Because I'm making supernatural power, dynamic in its working. It makes it available to me. And when I pray, I know I got it. I know I got it. No, no, I, I am that confident that when I pray in faith, believing, I know I have what I prayed for. And I know God answered me. Amen. Okay, okay. Just, just take a note of this. First John chapter 5. I'm just going to drop this nugget on you. Verse 14. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Glory to God. Okay, here's the fourth point. Here's the fourth, fourth point. Things I need to know to turn my defeat into victory. Watch this now. I have to be, uh, my victory is assured. Oh, no, no. I, let's see. What I got? Oh, I got to trust God's sovereignty? Oh, but I missed the point. I, I skipped the point. I'm going to give it to you, though. Amen. Victory is assured by God. That's, that's the point I want to make. That victory is assured by God, okay? Go to Romans chapter 8. I know I got the scripture in there. Romans chapter 8. I know I got the scripture in there. Mm. My victory is assured by God. Woo! Jesus, amen. So the reason I can go to sleep and sleep well is because, Brother Grogan, God has already assured me, you got the victory. Go to sleep. Why pull out your hair? Why throw your wig on the floor? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, you weave, you weave. Praise the Lord. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. What y'all laughing at? <laughs> y'all better stop acting like that in church. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse number 1. Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. Look what he says. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I'm assured my victory, amen, because God is with me. If God is for me, who can be against me? And that's what the prophet was trying to show the servant. Listen, man, I know them thousands of troops are out there, but if God is for us, they in trouble. Who can be against us? They can bring their horses, their, horses, their chariots, their soldiers, but if God be for us, who can be against us? And then let's put my final point up there, Shell. My final point is to trust God's sovereignty. All right, last scripture. Go to Isaiah 54. I got to trust God's sovereignty, that he is the supreme ruler of the universe. Mm, mm, mm. Isaiah, Isaiah 54. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good place to close right here, man. I'm telling you. Isaiah 54. Look at verse number 17. This is a good place to close right here. Look what he says. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. I got to trust that God is the supreme ruler. 
in his sovereignty. And he tells us that no weapon. I, it, look, it may be formed. They might have gotten it together. They might have connected and wanted to get you out. But it shall not prosper. It, I tell, it shall not prosper. I'm going to declare to the atmosphere. I know you formed it against me. But it shall not prosper. Uh huh. I, I'm telling you, look, you formed it against me. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all got together. Y'all put your plan together. Y'all came together and y'all covered it together. We gonna get him. But even though you planned it, it's not gonna prosper. And I know you've been talking about me. Amen. Hallelujah. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, I condemn it in the name of Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Amen. Because this is my heritage as a servant of the Most High God. Because I, I trust his sovereignty, amen, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So, so again, here you go. Have a spiritual vision that overcomes fear. Understand that God's protection is greater than any threat that you have. Know that the power of your prayer causes the supernatural to happen. Number four, you are assured of God's victory, amen. And then watch this now, and then because you trust in God's sovereignty. And I got to stop today because I am out of time. Somebody give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Woo! Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word this morning, Father. Woo! God, when it looks like defeat in our lives, God, you calls us to have the victory. God, just like the prophet Elisha, seen the same conditions as the servant but he had a different perspective what looked like it caught them by surprise it didn't catch you by surprise and because the prophet trusted in you and your word I can just imagine in my own mind that when the prophet servant came to him and said master we we're about to die I can just imagine a smile on his face because he understood and knew that day that the servant would see something different and God I'm praying for each and every person that's facing a challenge an impossible situation that God that they will see it from your perspective that there's more with us than they are with them Father, I pray today that you, that you would open their eyes, that they might see. That they can see it, God. That they have a vision beyond their current situation. God, that they can see that your protection is greater than any threat that comes against us. And Father, as we pray in faith, God, we are assured that you would answer our prayer. God, we know it is yea and amen in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray now that they will walk in this victory that's already ours. That they will understand that you have already given us the victory. Before it manifests, before we see it in the natural, God, it is already ours. Because we trust in you, Father. We trust in you with all of our being, God. Knowing that you will show up in our situation. Thank you for your word today, Father. Thank you for your encouragement today. To know that in the midst of what looks like defeat, that we have the victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And amen. Somebody give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Jesus. Amen. Well, guess what? It's all for time in the house of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Lord Jesus, man. I'm telling you, man. Listen, don't be like the servant. Be like the prophet. See it differently. God's about to do a new thing in your life. You know, this morning I, on the prayer line, I, I, I told you that God is doing a new thing. Amen. He going to turn your situation around, that he's going to be glorified. Oh, my God. He's going to get all the glory in the name of Jesus. So our brothers come now and pass out our envelopes. 
Hallelujah. You're going to pass out the envelopes as we get prepared to sow our seed today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So listen, those of you who are watching today and you're not in the house, amen, you say, well, Pastor Sharp, listen, I, that word was so good today. I, I, I want to be a blessing. I want to I wanna sow my tithes, my offers, and my gifts of love. But Pastor, I don't have a way of, of getting it to you through the screen. Well, well, you do. We use technology for everything in our daily life. You know, we order groceries, amen, online. And by the time we get to the store, they've already prepared it, bagged it. And all, all we have to do is just put it in our car. And listen, we pay for it in advance. Amen. And, and, and we don't even complain. Whenever we go to a sporting event, we go online, we purchase our tickets, we purchase our parking pass, so that when we get to the event, all we have to do is just show up, get out of our car, walk in, show our phone, they scan the QR code, bam, we're in the event that we paid for. And so it is with the things of God, we could sow our seed right now, amen, via all the, the platforms that we have. So you are without excuse that says, well, I, I don't know how I can do it. Amen. If you're not in the house and get an envelope. Amen. So you say, well, pastor, how can I sow my seed, my tithes, my offers, my gifts of love? How can I do that today? How can I honor God with my giving? Well, if you're watching today and you're on a above the cloud page, there's a donate button right there at the top of the screen. If you just click that donate button and then hit that drop down arrow to designate your seed, your tithes, your offers, or your gifts of love. Amen. Then hit the submit button and you can sow your seed that way. If you're watching today and you're on uh, Facebook Live, in the comments section there is a link there that you can click the link. Amen. It will give you the opportunity to, to go into our, our mobile app portal and, and you can designate your seed that way. If you're watching it, you can scan the bottom QR code on the right hand side of your screen. Amen. Again, it will get you into our giving app. And once you're in that giving app, you can designate your seed and you can sow it that way. If you're on our mobile app, there's a give button on the mobile app. Just simply click that give button. Again, it opens up and it allows you the opportunity to sow your seed, your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts of love. And you say, well, Pastor, I'm, I'm old school. How can I mail it to you? <laughs> yes, you can mail it to us, the P.O. Box 12428, Beaumont, Texas 77726. Amen. Well, listen, the, the, the most important thing is that you get your seed into the ground. Amen. That's, what, that's what's important, that you get your seed into the ground. And this is good ground to sow into. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, as always, what we like to do is we like to confess the word of God over our seed. So if you would just read the screen in just a second or repeat after me as we make our confession. Father, I thank you that you have a financial plan for the believer called tithes and offerings. At this moment, I set my heart to tap into your financial plan for me. Satan will not rob me anymore in my finances. In the name of Jesus, by faith, I am at this moment planting my financial seed into the kingdom of God's field. I am doing this because I know that this is a biblical truth and I set my heart to obey the word. Father, I also know that it is a biblical truth that in return for my financial faithfulness, you are supplying all my needs and above my needs because I have tapped into your financial plan I believe that you're raising up somebody somewhere to use their power their ability and their influence to help me in Jesus name I hold fast to my confession in your financial plan in Jesus name Amen Father we thank you this today for this opportunity 
to give to you that which you blessed us with. Father, we thank you for every tither in the house and those who are watching online, God. And we declare the windows of heaven blessing upon our lives. We believe, Father, that you give us wisdom and insight into financial matters as a result of our giving. And then those who give toward the pastor's compensation fund, we're in our agree with them right now that they receive a first-class return of their giving. We truly believe that they live the best, they wear the best, they drive the best, they eat the best, they go first class in life. And then, Father, those who give toward the, toward the television ministry, building funds and the missions, Father, your word declares that when we give for the support of the ministry, and you shall return to us the maximum return. And we believe by faith, Father, that men shall give unto us good measure, press down, shaking together, and run it over when you cause men to give it to our bosom. And then finally, Father, those of us who choose to eliminate kingdom debt, we thank you, Father, that you eliminate our personal debt and that we live a debt-free life willing to obey you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Our brothers come down and receive our offering. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Listen, those of you who are watching today, thank you so much for watching today, for being a part of our service. Hey, listen, even in an impossible situation, God can turn what looks like a defeat into your victory, amen? And I want you to meditate on this word. Go back and listen to it over and over again. Because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, also, uh, as we prepare to go back to school, I still have a few more uh, certificates uh, for free haircuts to give away. Listen, if you if, if your child needs a haircut, DM me or put it in the comment section. We'll work out something to get the, the certificate to you. Amen. So they can look good, feel good. And if they feel good, they do good. Amen. And then, listen, also, I want you to listen, look, look at the trailer that I'm going to show you in just a few moments. There's a movie called The Forge coming out real soon. I want you to have a date night. Take your mate to the, to the movies to go see The Forge. Amen. And, and listen, the advertisement is coming right at the end of this. Amen. Now remember this. We're building faith. We're building bridges. And we're building lives. And Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. We'll see you next time on our broadcast. Somebody give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Do you want to be saved? Well, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come now confessing and believing that you raised Jesus from the dead. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart. I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that simple prayer, welcome to the family of God. We believe you got born again. What's next, you may ask? Keep God first in your life and get into a good Bible teaching church that will help you grow and develop in the things of God. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Hello, everyone. I wanted to share with you a cause that's very close to my heart, Child Sponsorship Through Compassion International. This unique opportunity has not only opened my eyes to the broader world, but also has shown me the profound impact we can have on a child's life with a simple act of kindness. Sponsoring a child offers them hope for a better future. It provides them with essential needs and most importantly, shows them they are loved. When a child learns they have been sponsored, their joy is beyond words. It's a moment of indescribable happiness knowing someone across the globe cares about them. This bond is not just life-changing for a child, but incredibly rewarding for you as a sponsor as well. The connection goes beyond financial support. It's about encouragement and being a pivotal part in their journey towards a brighter future. It's about giving these children the tools they need to dream big and achieve their full potential. I invite you to consider sponsoring a child through Compassion International. It's more than a commitment. It's a journey of love, learning, and growth. By doing so, we can, together, change the course of these children's lives one child at a time. For your convenience, you can easily start this journey today. You can scan the QR code right here to choose a child to sponsor. Or if you prefer a more hands-on approach, feel free to pick up a sponsorship package in service. Both methods will guide you through the simple process of connecting with a child who dreams of a brighter future, a future you can help provide. Let's be the reason a child smiles today. Let's give them a story filled with hope and a future they dare to dream of. Thank you for considering this heartfelt request to make a real difference in the world today. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Your grandfather drove this? 
My dad told me he was gonna fix it over me. And this is the way he left it. Like everything else. You are my son, but I'm giving you one month to find a job, or you can find one of your little friends that's gonna let you sleep on their couch for free. Can I help you? I'm just trying to talk to a young lady right here. I need for you to leave my shop right now. I'm gone, and I won't be back either. That's something right there your father would do. Well, I ain't him. You acting like him, boy. It's hard for a woman to call out the man and her son. I just need some prayer support. I'm just trying to see about a job, right? I ain't here to buy nothing. You what, you a salesman for this company? I'm the president. That's for more. A big part of becoming a man is showing up. Can you do that, Isaiah? I'm here, all these promises. Oh, lies! When my sister tells me that she needs prayer support, uh -huh. honey, I bring prayer support. Am I in the right place? Miss Clara! We pray that the Lord will open Isaiah's eyes so that he could see himself the way that the Lord sees him. You're 50 minutes early. It's trying not to be late again. I want to introduce you to a small group of men that mean the world to me. We grow together, we eat together. It's one of the most important things I've ever done in my life. God has forgiven me for so much. Who was I to refuse to forgive? Okay, Jesus, I give it to you. What kind of man do you want to be? And what do you want people to think when they see you coming? We only got six of us, seven including Emmett. I'm willing to go to second mile. We can't just walk out and do nothing. Let's roll. I may be blunt. A man stands in front of me. Isaiah, welcome to the forge. Mm, mm, now that is good. Miss Claire, I need you to come back here more often. Mm -hmm. Keisha needs you. Hey, church family. Just dropping in with a friendly reminder to make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, as well as following us on Facebook. We upload and broadcast fresh content on a weekly basis. Not sure if you're up to date? Here's how you do it. Go to YouTube.com and type in Faith Christian Center Church Ministries and hit subscribe. Also, click the bell to make sure that you receive notifications every time we upload. Or you can log on to Facebook.com and type in Faith Christian Center Church. Hit the like button and we'll notify you every time there's fresh content on the page. So that way you're always up to speed. And thank you so much for all that you do as our viewers for God's ministry. Remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Well, I certainly pray that you enjoyed today's broadcast. And again, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. <laughs>